What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, as promised, we're going to discuss the measurement principles and assumptions in accounting. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Why do we need measurement standards and principles? The most important reason is to ensure high quality reporting with no confusing and complicated bits and pieces. Well, then who sets those standards? Presently, there are two primary accounting standard setting bodies. The International Accounting Standards Board IASB for short, and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB for short. The standards determined by IASB are called International Financial Reporting Standards, or IFRS for short, and these standards are followed by more than 130 countries around the world. Most companies in the United States follow standards issued by the FASB called Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, or GAAP for short. Because of its popularity, we're going to learn accounting based on international financial reporting standards. Okay, great. When it comes to IFRS, it generally uses one of the two measurement principles, the historical cost principle or the fair value principle. Selection of which principle to follow generally relates to the trade-offs between relevance and faithful representation. These two are fundamental qualities that make accounting information useful for decision making. Relevance means that financial information is capable of making a difference in a decision. Information with no bearing on a decision is irrelevant. For example, in the decision to replace equipment that's been used for the past six years, the original cost of the equipment does not have relevance. What will have relevance are the future amounts, such as the cost of the new equipment, and the savings that will occur when the old equipment is replaced. Makes sense, right? Great. In the case of faithful representation, it means that the numbers and descriptions match what really existed or happened. They are factual. Faithful representation is a necessity because most users have neither the time nor the expertise to evaluate the factual content of the information. For example, if a company reported in its balance sheet that it had $2 million worth of land and building as of the end of June, then that amount should indeed have been present on that date. Now let's move on to the principles themselves. The historical cost principle, or just cost principle, dictates that companies record assets at their cost. This is true not only at the time the asset is purchased, but also over the time the asset is held. For example, if, the, if any company purchases land, for example, let's say the X company purchases land for $300,000. Uh, the company initially reports it in its accounting records at, you got it right, $300,000. But what does it do if by the end of the next year, the fair value of the land has increased to $400,000? Under the historical cost principle, it continues to report the land at $300,000, not changing the amount to $400,000. Right. The fair value principle, on the other hand, states that assets and liabilities should be reported at fair value. The price received to sell an asset or settle a liability. Fair value refers to the actual value of an asset, a product or service, that's agreed upon by both the seller and the buyer. Let's turn back to the previous example. Uh, if that same company X can agree with a potential buyer to sell the land for $400,000, then according to fair value principle, it'll record the transaction value as $400,000 instead of $300,000. In determining which measurement principle to use, companies weigh the factual nature of cost figures versus the relevance of fair value. In general, even though IFRS allows companies to revalue property, plan, and equipment and other long-lived assets to fair value, most companies choose to use historical cost principle. Only in situations where assets are actively traded, such as investment securities, do companies apply the fair value principle extensively. Now that we've finished talking about measurement principles, let's turn our attention to accounting assumptions. Assumptions provide a foundation for the accounting process. Two main assumptions are the monetary unit assumption and the economic entity assumption. The monetary unit assumption requires that companies include in the accounting records only transaction data that can be expressed in money terms. This assumption enables accounting to quantify or measure economic events. The monetary unit assumption is vital to applying the historical cost principle. This assumption prevents the inclusion of some relevant information in the accounting records. For example, the health of a company's owner, the quality of service, and the morale of employees are not included. The reason? Companies cannot quantify this information in money terms. 
Though this information is important, companies record only events that can be measured in monetary terms. Great. As you may already know, an economic entity can be any organization or unit in society. It may be a company, a governmental unit, a municipality, a school district, or a church. The economic entity assumption requires that the activities of the entity be kept separate and distinct from the activities of its owner and all other economic entities. To illustrate, remember the example from the previous video about a mechanic owning a car repair garage. Let's call him Jim. Jim must keep his personal living costs separate from the expenses and operational costs of the garage. That's the basic idea behind the economic entity assumption. And that's basically all for today's video. I hope it was informative and engaging. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thank you.